everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Hordes of the Underdark. Last episode, we spoke with our new allies and companions to see what we could learn. The Seer here told us uh, everything she could about the Underdark here. Nathira told us of the Valshares' allies and Valen told us of where we could find assistance and allies. Overall, we have five tasks. The Illithid, mighty mind flayers, creatures which enslave other beings mentally and physically, are allies of the Valshares, and we can try to deal with their overmind to destroy them. The Beholders have also allied with the Valshares, as and the Valshares has found an undead army. All of them must be dealt with. Meanwhile, we've been told of a strange island town and golems on an island over to the west, over to the east, I think, in the oh, on the lake. So we'll need to investigate there, where we may find allies or assistance. As is, let us leave and see the camp itself, city core and port. Uh, boss. Oh. Uh, yes, Deacon. Um, we is really an underdark. We is really, really an underdark. Just figured that out, did you? This be wonderful. Deacon runs around on the. Deacon runs around on the spot, waving his hands in the air excitedly. Deacon reads so much about Underdark, now Deacon actually be here! Oh, this be so good for Deacon's book! Epic Hero Goes to the Deadly Underdark, sequel be greatest book ever! You mean you're not scared to be in the Underdark at all? Scared? Deacon wants so bad to travel to Underdark earlier, during, during journeys, except he knows he just ends up slave to tentacle heads or fed to draw spider, maybe. But now... Now Deacon be in the Underdark with the great epic hero! Deacon gets to travel to Underdark while serving urgent mission of doom! That'd be really, really cool, boss. I suppose you're right. Oh, Deacon is right. You come around to Deacon's way of thinking soon, boss. This be greatest adventure, you see? <laughs> ah, I'm sure. Alright. There's a whole bunch of things around here to look around at. There's the docks up there, training grounds. Maybe your public house, Lithmiathar public house. Armory and forge, ale gardens house, maybe your merchants training grounds. Okay. And I think that's probably the way out over there. Well, there are a bunch of drill over here. I suppose the corral. I guess we can take a look over there first. Got a house here. I cannot. Can't go in there. Doesn't look like we can actually get into this house. I greet you. Sierra and your refugees have used up all my stores. I have nothing left to sell you. Ah, commander. Commander Imloth, at your service. The drill commander gives you a brisk, a brisk salute. Is there anything you need? I'm pretty busy training my troops, but I can spare a few moments if it'll help you against the Asheress and her followers. You're training your troops pretty hard. It's for their own good. I've seen the kind of enemies they're going to have to face when we finally go up against the Valsheress and her army. They need all the training they can get. Can you tell me about the army of the Valsheress? The Valsheress commands a massive army, and it's not just the drone followers. She's recruited all sorts of Underdark creatures to her cause. Beholders, Illithid, and even the Undead. Tell me about the Beholders. The information we have is that a hive of Beholders somewhere to the west of here has aligned itself with the Valshares. That's bad news. Even one Beholder is more trouble than I like. Of course, all our problems would be solved if someone could kill off the Beholder Tyrant that rules the Hive. Without her, the entire colony would collapse, and the Valshares would lose her Beholder allies. Any advice for fighting a Beholder? Try to find some kind of magic resistance to protect against those beams they shoot from their eyes. Their rays can cause pain, death, paralysis, disintegration. Will you get the idea? If possible, try to get in close. The Beholders use their eye beams and spells in battle, but in close physical combat they aren't nearly as effective. Well, good thing I'm a fighter. <laughs> they won't like that. Tell me about the Illithid. You probably know them better as Mind Flayers. You know these creatures with the tentacles. 
The Valsharest must have convinced the Elder Brains to side with her. Yeah. Elder Brains. The Illithid live in scattered colonies, each one ruled by a giant Elder Brain. But the communities aren't isolated. The Brains all communicate with each other, and they all work together. If it were simply a matter of killing off an Elder Brain, we could just attack Zorvac more to the west. That wouldn't stop other Illithid from joining the Valsharest. If we could negotiate with the Elder Brains, we might be able to convince them all to abandon the Valsharest. But to do that, someone has to go into Zorvac more. I could negotiate with the Zorvac Moor Elder Brain. Go into an Illithid settlement. You're braver than I am, Liam. I better give you some tips in case things don't go smoothly. You have to find some way to shield your mind against them. The Mind Flayers are physically weak, but they can destroy your mind with their very thoughts. Of course, their powers aren't much use against creatures with no mind of their own, like undead or golems. The Illithid are terrified of those kinds of creatures. Tell me about the undead. We have reports of undead moving from the caverns in the west to join the Valshares and her forces. We suspect some type of cult is behind it, though we don't have any evidence. A few times we got reports of undead on the move, and we tried to quick sneak attack, hoping to thin their numbers. But we didn't stand a chance, especially against the vampires. The vampires aren't easy to kill. The undead are immune to most normal attacks, and even magic has a limited effect. And even if we manage to take down one of the vampire leaders, we know they'll be back. A dead vampire just turns into a cloud of mist and flies away. The only way to kill them for good is to catch one in its coffin and drive a stake through its black heart. Problem is, we don't know where those coffins are. And even if we did, I doubt we'd be able to get to them. That's more the kind of job for heroes like you, Liam. Alright, I want to ask some questions. My expertise is limited. I know something about the enemies who've allied themselves with the Valkyries, Holders, Illithid, and the Undead. Beyond that, I couldn't doubt I could tell you much. How about yourself? Oh, there's not much to tell, really. As you can see, I am one of the Drow. Like most here, I spent my early years as part of Drow society. A savage world of cruel and senseless violence. I distinguished myself in battle, and the matron mother of my house elevated me to a position of prominence in her army. But despite my successes, I knew something was wrong with my life. We Drow are a corrupt people. Our own evil consumes us. It devours us. I knew I had to escape. I fled Drow society, searching for the worshippers of Elistrae, hoping to find a better way. In time, my search brought me here to the Seer and her followers. Now I use my experience to train others so they can help in the fight against the Valkyress and her army. Can you tell me about the army of the Valkyress? Valsh, okay. Um, I'm looking for allies against the Valsharess. I'm afraid I can't help you there. Our defenses are thin enough as it is. I can't spare a single recruit. Not like any of us common soldiers would be of much use to you anyway. My soldiers are effective in large numbers, but little more than fodder one on one. I just hope they can stand up to those monsters the Valsharess is going to throw at us. Alright, uh, I'll be going now. The commander gives you another salute and turns back to his troops. Very well. Hmm, we've got the morale here. Well met. Food is scarce here in the Underdark. Lithmyathar is lucky to have a herd of deep roth. A stable and the diets of many Drow and Durgar communities, these herd animals in the Underdark are small but powerfully built. Alright, so that's just their... I guess... They're herd animals. That looks like it's a way off. But we got this here. Mavir Public House. Let's take a look inside. There are many rooms here. That's a way out, that's a way out. Oh, there are... There is someone in the middle here. Get on with it. This female drow appears younger than many of the others in the camp, though it is obvious from her bearing that she is a person of importance. So you are the reveal the seer has put her faith in. Liam Johnson, isn't it? My name is Zessir, only daughter and sole surviving heir to Matron Myrun of House Mavier. I was hoping you would come to see me, Liam Johnson. I have an offer for you, but it would draw too much attention if I had sought you out. 
But since you've stumbled over to me... Draw attention. From who? What are you talking about? House Mavier, my house, has fallen on hard times. Matron Myrune, my mother, has brought us to the very brink of destruction. Many believe it is time for a change. Many believe I should. Of course, my mother is no fool. She understands the danger I represent, which is why she exiled me from the tower where she now dwells. She thinks she's safe inside the high walls. Obviously, she isn't as safe as she thinks. I know this is how we were brought up, but there is another path you can take. One that isn't fraught with betrayal and death. Elastray can... Don't throw your god in my face. We can't all run away to the surface. Some of us have to survive down here in the Underdark, and that means plotting to assure my own future. My mother thinks I am no longer a threat, but I have more support than she knows. All I need to complete my coup is an assassin powerful enough to kill her and her bodyguard. You're pretty open about this. Aren't you afraid of being found out? Matron Myrune already suspects I am plotting against her, but rumors and hearsay aren't enough to make her act. She can't kill off her last surviving heir without indisputable proof. If you were to tell her what I told you, it would just be another unsubstantiated rumor. She's not going to move against me based on anything you tell her. You want me to kill your own mother. <laughs> Surely you aren't surprised. This is the way of the drow. The matron mothers raise their daughters knowing full well we are scheming to replace them as soon as we come of age. And what's in this for me? There are the usual compensations, of course. Gold or powerful magic items. But helping me is also in your best interests. And the interests of the seer. I know my mother. She doesn't believe we can defeat the Valcheress, and she's afraid. Do you really believe she will fight by the seer's side when the Valcheress attacks? Matron my rune will betray your, your seer the first chance she gets. I, however, actually believe we can defeat the Valcheress. I won't turn on my allies at the first sign of trouble. And what do I have to do? The plan is simple enough. I will give you my signet ring. Take this to the guards outside my mother's tower to the north. They have already sworn their allegiance to me. Show them the ring and they will let you into the tower while they summon my mother and her guard, Tebimar. When they arrive, kill them. If you do this, I will see you are amply rewarded. Twenty thousand gold pieces, not to mention the knowledge of House Mavir, will stand with you when the Valcherest comes. Twenty thousand? Okay, I'll do it. The drow smiles and you can't help but feel a chill. Excellent! Take my signet ring and show it to the guards by the tower to the north. After that, the rest is up to you. Satisfied that she has what she wants from you, Zesir demisses you with a simple wave of her hand. This is a dangerous game, Liam. Once you become involved in the politics of the Drow, you can never be sure who to trust. I hope you aren't getting in over your head. One can only hope she's telling the truth, and that she will stand with us. One can only hope. <sighs> Moving on. Yes, that's the way out. Gates to the Lithmiathar environs. Alright, there's a few things up here. <laughs> I greet you. This drow tries to ignore you, focusing his attention on his troops as they practice their drills. Realizing you're not going to go away, he finally turns to face you. What do you want, surfacer? Can't you see I'm busy training the troops? I've got no time for a follower of Elastray. I'm not a follower of Elastray. The drow gives you a sideways glance. You're not. But you came from the Seer's Temple. I just assumed you were one of those pacifists. He gives you a quick once-over. I can see you're a fighter, and you look like you know how to handle yourself. I guess we can use that now, even from a surfacer like you. Besides, it's not like we can count on the seer or her peoples when the battle when the battle starts. House Mavio needs better allies than that if we want to stand a chance against the Valcherets. What do you know have against the followers of Illustrate? They're weak, for one thing. And they oppose anything that makes Drow society strong. Cruelty, ruthlessness, cunning, the belief that you must conquer or perish. 
And now Lithmayathar is overrun with these soft-hearted fools. There's more of them here than us. And what good will they be to House Mavir when the Valshares comes? They're not warriors. Tell me about House Mavir. House Mavir was one of the great houses of Menzo Menzoberanzan. But when the Valshares first came to prominence, we made the mistake of opposing her. The consequences were harsh. Many of us were slaughtered. Only the small group of survivors you see here managed to escape. We fled the city and came here with the matron mother to our ancestral home. Now we're nothing but a ragtag group waiting to be wiped out by the Valshares. Maybe I'd like our chances better if only our allies weren't all followers of Illustrae. What do you know about the Valshares? I know her army is going to take us out. That's more than enough. Go ask the seer or her followers about the Valshares. They seem to think they have all the answers. I'll be going now. Go bother Commander Imloth. He's probably not doing anything. It's not like you can make soldiers out of the followers of Elistray. Hmm. Uh, let's see. So that's the tower there. Oh, look, please. The City of Lustion. What is that doing down here, of all places? There are merchants, Elistray followers. There's a few things to look at here. Oh, Be careful what you say here. There is a tension in Lithmayathar between the followers of the Seer and the Drow of House Mavir. It appears these Drow are having some kind of drinking contest with this Svirf, Svirf Neblin merchant his servant. The Svirf looks like he isn't enjoying it. Fish! No more. No more. Come on, Svirf, drink up. I want that record. Hoo hoo! Look at him go! He cannot think that gnome likes drinking no more. You gonna help him, boss? The Svirf Neblin looks up at you with tormented eyes. Please, no more. I can't take any more, please. Hey, what's going on here? The drow turns to face you, obviously annoyed at the interruption. Can't you see we're busy here? My Svirf only needs four more ales to break the camp record for most drinks in one day. <laughs> he'll never make it. The Svirf set that, that set the record was twice his run size, and he died the next day from alcohol poisoning. It's enough! No sense wasting good ale on a servant. Yeah, maybe this human surfacer has a point. Besides, I'm bored. Let's go find something else to do. Thanks, your kind master. <laughs> One more drink would have been the death of me. Excuse me now while I pass you. Way to go, boss! But Deacon not want to be around when he wakes up. He's going to have one big headache. I'm sure. Let's speak with the barmaster here. My greetings. The bartender scowls at you. You're with that seer and those followers of Illustre, aren't you? We don't see too many of your kind here in this part of the camp. We'll tolerate your presence here since we all want to see the Valshares stopped, but that doesn't mean we have to like you or your seer. Now go away! I'm busy. As you wish. Let's speak with this uh, wizard here. Greetings. This drow is obviously a mage of great power. He stares at you intently, as if trying to read your very thoughts. After several uncomfortable seconds, he finally speaks. You are the one the seer foretold, are you not? Normally I don't put much faith in her visions, but you seem capable for a surfacer. I am Golris, High Wizard of House Mavir. I have a large inventory of magical supplies you might find useful in your efforts to defeat the Valshares. Given the circumstances, my prices are quite reasonable. I want to ask you some questions. I don't know that I could tell you much this year hasn't already, but go ahead. Ask your questions. Why is a high wizard out here hawking his wares? Over the years, I have accumulated a significant collection of magical wares. However, with the army of the Valshares approaching, I would prefer to have my assets in a more liquid form. Should the battle against House Mavir and the Seer's Rebels... Should the battle go against House Mavir and the Seer's Rebels, I want to be able to make a quick escape. And I'd rather travel with a pocket full of gold than empty-handed. Escape? You'd abandon everyone here? I'm a powerful wizard, but I can't turn the tide of battle alone. If I see defeat is inevitable, then why should I stay behind to be slaughtered when my magic can help me escape? 
Serving House Mavir has had its privileges, power, prestige, but I can find such things in the service of any troll host, house whose high wizard might happen to have an unfortunate accident. If everyone here is going to die anyway, it only makes sense that I should try to rebuild my life and position somewhere else, doesn't it? I just, you make a good point. I only say that not to piss you off. I'm glad you agree. Many of the Seer's followers can't accept my utilitarian philosophy. Elastre has twisted their mind with odd notions of loyalty and sacrifice. But this is neither the time nor the place for philosophical discussions. And if you find a way to stop the Valsheress, it will all be moved anyway. Do you have any advice for stopping the Valsheress? I'm afraid I can't help you there, though you might want to speak to Cavallus down by the docks. A strange character, but one who knows secrets even I can't fathom. Okay, what do you know about the Seer? I know she is a follower of Illustre, as are many of the Drow with her. This makes her unpopular with many of House Mavir's supporters. Old prejudices die hard. I, however, take a more realistic view of the current situation. House Mavir is weak and vulnerable. We need the Seer and her draw. It is a marriage of convenience. Of course, I don't plan to be here should this marriage end badly. If you fail to stop the Valsheress, I won't hesitate to make my escape from this doomed camp. Do you know anything about the Valsheress? I know very little, though not for lack of trying. She has powerful magic under her control. Some say she has bound an archdevil to her will. In any case, my spells can learn nothing. But I don't need my magic to know that she will destroy any all who oppose her, including everyone in this camp. Tell me about House Mavir. A tragic tale of lost opportunities and poorly chosen alliances. House Mavir was once a power to be reckoned with in the great drow city of Menzo Baranzin. But House Mavir chose to side against the Valsheris rather than accept a subservient role as her ally. The results of that misguided decision are evident all around you. Now it seems the long history of House Mavir is going to come to a final and inescapable end, unless you somehow manage to stop the Valsheris and a great army. Indeed. Now let me see your inventory. Uh, only, well, only ten grand. I don't know if anywhere else will give us more. But let's see. He's mostly mage stuff. He's a striding six. Wow, that's impressive. Mm, some decent cloaks. Nothing I want to buy. Master Adventurer's robe. Uh, Weapon-wise, that's an interesting bow design. Forever. This elegant bow quivers with magic when touched. Engraved ancient elven runes tell the tale of the arcane archer Meadow Everleaf and how she found this bow growing in the forests of Cormanthor. She plucked this gentle weapon and carried it with her, but could never find any material to string the bow with. One fateful evening, trolls attacked her, and she soon depleted her arrows. Tossing away her mundane bow, she pulled out forever, and saw a magical bowstring appear. Knocking an imaginary arrow, she let loose and slew the trolls. The bow has been kept in her tomb since her death, but rumors suggest that troll thieves may have taken it. Massive attack bonus and mighty and unlimited ammo, so we wouldn't have to worry about that. All does extra fire damage. Sadly, only arcane archers can use it. Okay, quarterstaff. Many potions and the like. Magical items. Nothing particularly notable. Well, iron skin ring, which is, gives damage reduction. And nothing really of note here. Okay. I'll see if this other guy has anything. And this forge here. I greet you. Please speak with Master Resolvir if you have any questions. Yes, let's. Well met. This drow smith looks up from his forge, his face streaked with sweat and soot. You're that surface of the seer's been waiting for, aren't you? I wondered how long until you wandered over my way. My name's Resolvir, Master Craftsman and Weaponsmith Extraordinaire. And you're Liam Johnson, right? Pleased to meet you. If there's anything you need, I'm here to help. Feel free to look over my inventory. Or if you want, I can upgrade your weapon for you. Hold on, you can upgrade weapons? 
Didn't I tell you to I'm a master craftsman? I can take any weapon and make it better if you give me enough gold. Since I'm trying to save you all, couldn't you give me a deal? I'm not doing this out of greed. I need the gold to fuel my magical furnace. Gold makes the enchanted fires burn clean and hot. Without the gold, I can't forge or upgrade weapons. Okay, fair enough. How does this work? My work is somewhat different from the smiths who pound weapons with giant hammers. I'm a craftsman, an artist. I use my skill and powerful magic instead of brute force. Just bring me a weapon and I can use the magic of my forge to improve it. I can add enchantments. I can imbue it with the powers of fire, ice, or lightning. Whatever you need, I can do. I see you've gotten a weapon right there in your hand. Would you like me to upgrade it? Let's see what you have. Not a problem. What would you like me to do to your Enseric? Well, we can add an enhancement bonus. Currently he's at plus five, but we can make it better, which is nice. We can add acid, cold, fire, or electrical damage for a decent amount. We can make the weapon permanently haste me, which would be very good and save us having to wear these boots of speed. We can make the weapon keen. I think that gives extra critical damage or something. Make the weapon grant me true seeing, so I never have to worry about seeing, uh, about being unable to see invisible foes. Make the weapon give me resistance against magic, which is pretty good. Or make the weapon regenerate my health, which is something very nice. All of this is very expensive, though. 30,000 at minimum for the true seeing, which I don't think is really worth it. And for the most of it is 150,000 for the permanent haste. Which is incredible, don't get me wrong. But still. That is pretty good. Right now, all we've got is the enhancement bonus plus four and vampiric regeneration. I may want to go for a plus five enhancement bonus later on. And the vampiric regeneration is fine. Better than the regenerating health, since I get some health every time I hit someone. Which is pretty good. Not as good passively, but still pretty good. But not now. I've changed my mind. I want to ask you some questions. Questions aren't really my strength, but I'll do my best to help you out. Tell me more about, your, about yourself. My story is nothing special. I started learning my craft at a young age, and my skills quickly brought me to the attention of Matron Usala of House Zarostra in Chen Nassad. But when the Valshares first came to power, House Zarostra refused to join her. A big mistake. The Valshares wiped out the entire house. For all I know, I'm the only survivor. During my flight from Shed Nassad, I encountered some followers of Illustre. They took pity on me and brought me to the Seer, and I've been part of her entourage ever since. So you're a follower of Illustre. I came here with the Seer, but I'm not a follower of Illustre. Not everyone who follows the Seer shares her religious convictions. I suppose I'm proof of that. Some of us are just Dro fleeing the Valshares. Several of the powerful Drow houses have been all but wiped out by your army, leaving the handful of survivors to get by however they can. Uh, what can you tell me about this camp? Well, it used to be the ancestral home of House Mavir, but since we moved in, I mean the Seer and her followers, it's more like a refugee camp. As you can imagine, there's a lot of tension here. Most Drow don't like the followers of Illustre, and House Mavir is no exception. They don't have much choice, though. If we don't band together, the Valshares will sweep us all away. If we can stay united, then at least we'll have a chance. Or so the Seer says. Do you know anything about the Valshares? Nothing more than what you've already heard, I'm sure. I hear she used to be one of the matron mothers from Menzo Baranzin, but that might just be a rumor. All I know is that her army will crush us all if we don't find a way to stay united against her. I just hope the House Mavir is smart enough to realize this. Let me see what you got inventory-wise. Still only ten grand. Okay, fine. Sell them. Not as much as I'd like. Power shield plus one, plus two. What is our current weapon? Mirror shield, which is plus three. We're fine. Don't need to get that tower shield. Belts. Gauntlets of ogre power. Balanced hands. Amid dexterity and two-weapon fighting. Nice. Tower shield plus three. Whole bunch of armor and the like. Goes up to plus three. With full plate plus three being the max. 
currently our red dragon armor is the best we can get. Weapon wise, he's got quite a bit. Breath of the Maiden weapon. So it looks like it's mostly up to plus three for his bonuses. With a cold iron blade. Next to a cold damage, low enhancement damage. It's not worth it. Interesting that we can actually get whips. Bonus feet disarm. Hmm. Whips up to level six. Impressive. Doesn't look like there's anything here that we want, however. Not at all. No scrolls or potions. Magic items. All Nasher's Ring of Strength. Nasher was quite fond of this ring for the additional strength that granted him saved it. For the additional strength that granted him saved his life on several occasions. He gifted the ring to the hero who saved Neverwinter from the plague. This item is one of four other items that once belonged to Lord Nasher. If worn together, their magic grants the wearer additional benefits. I am going to buy this. Like it said, there is a collection of four, and Nasher's Ring of Strength is one of them. I'll take it, and I'll wear it over the Ring of Resistance. I think that's fine. So sell the Ring of Resistance. It's cheap. Now we have enhanced strength. I don't know what else we'll find. There are three other items of Nasher's type. I don't know what they are. I can't remember where they are. I think one of them is a pair of boots, but I don't know the rest. Maybe a cloak? We'll keep our eyes open. And nothing really else really here. Alright. While I would like to continue exploring, this episode has gone on basically long enough here. Next episode, we'll finish exploring through this place. Till then, I'm Chester44, that is Liam Johnson, Nathira, and Deacon. This has been a Let's Play of Hordes of the Underdark. And I shall see you all next time. Why are you doing that? <laughs>